how much of the story or the final product that we see is um, kind of mapped out before you visit these places and how much of the final narrative is actually just talking to people on the ground and the story emerges or blossoms from something uh, that you didn't quite expect. Mm. Um, so I'll go first yeah. on that one. Um, it's 50-50 if I'm honest. You, you have to have your research done, you have to know where you're going. That there is a story there that is real, that you've spoken to enough people who can guide you and prod you in the right direction, that people's stories are all kind of matching and so on. Um, uh, fundamentally it's somebody else's money normally that you're spending and if it's yours even more so you, you just want to know that it's real before you get there um, but then there's the story being real um, you know people are dying of X disease but then how you bring that to life who you interview which but who you interview when you're on the ground and then afterwards which bits of those interviews you choose to present and how you package them that's a whole other bit of the story which is where I say it's the other 50%, because you can get there and find that, yeah, I was right, these things are happening, but actually nobody will talk to me because I'm British, or whatever, you know, element of your self that puts people off for whatever reason. So yeah, it, it's 50-50 for me. Yeah. yeah, it kind of depends what you're doing. I mean, I've done, because um, a big part of it, as Shay said, is, is money is also the, always the issue, it's kind of like the budget, to, to know that you can make something you have to know that you can actually speak to people, so like you have to like produce it in advance, you know, it's called pre-production and you spend time shaping the story and figuring out like who you're gonna to talk to. Um, but I have done a few projects, I used to kind of run this thing called BBC Pop-Up and we'd go to different places and the whole point of it was you'd arrive in a place and then you'd crowdsource an idea and then you'd try and make it happen. And it was an interesting way of doing things and you definitely found stories that you wouldn't necessarily do, but it was a lot, it's definitely riskier at the same time. Um, so most of the time, you know, you have planned out a story and then you leave room for that story to change in some way. I'm making a documentary at the moment about like a, um, a serial killer called Samuel Little in America that will be on Channel 4 at the end of May. And um, that story changed. First of all, it was a story about like race and then it changed into a story more about class because it's about prostitutes being killed and the police not caring about prostitutes. Um, and that the story kind of transformed a bit as we started investigating it. So I think there's always a space for the story to change, but you do have a strong sense the story exists before you do it, otherwise you're not going to actually mm. get the money to make it. Mm. 